Right everyone, it is Finn here and welcome back to a brand new video where today we're going to be talking about 5 signings Tottenham Hotspurs need to make. Of course, I'm recording this after that 6-1 loss to Newcastle United. And although, yes, you could argue that they are in need of a first team coach, and obviously the tactics just weren't up to scratch, at the end of the day, multiple managers have said it at Tottenham Hotspurs, they are in need of new players with brand new mindsets. Of course, guys, if you have any other suggestions of players that I don't end up mentioning in this video, do let me know in the comment section down below, as your opinion is, well, obviously, it's valued, it's important. But of course, jumping into player number one of five that I think Tottenham Hotspurs need to sign. Now, of course, I'll see you guys on my community tab, which position you think needs the most change. And by an overwhelming amount, you guys think a brand new goalkeeper is in order. <laughs> I'm in danger! Which, of course, Hugo Lloris, the captain of the club, the World Cup winning goalkeeper, was substituted shoots it off at half time after conceding five goals in the first 21 minutes. I do tend to agree that although Hugo Lloris is a legend of the club, Tottenham Hotspurs do need a new goalkeeper. Now of course I have to ask you guys which goalkeeper you guys thought, you guys did seem to go with Jordan Pickford, but I think I have to go for the likes of Robert Sanchez here. Obviously the Brighton goalkeeper came on in the semi-final versus Manchester United in the FA Cup and had a really good performance despite the fact that the Seagulls got knocked out. But at the end of the day, the 25 year old goalkeeper, absolutely brilliant and he might be eager to get a move since there's been some competition at Brighton with the likes of Steele. Obviously, he's a brilliant goalkeeper, especially now that he's part of the Spanish national team. He's going to want more first-team football. And looking at his years at Brighton in the Premier League, getting 47 clean sheets in 132 games, which translates to about, what, a clean sheet every three games? Quick mess! Robert Sanchez is an absolutely brilliant goalkeeper, and at 25 years old, if like Tottenham Hotspurs can get him in for six, seven years, it would be an absolutely brilliant signing because, as I said, although Hugo Lloris and Foster or Forster are both brilliant goalkeepers, once again, if Tottenham Hotspurs want to fight for a Champions League spot, if they want to play against some of the best teams in Europe, unfortunately, changes need to be made. Whether they can get him for 25 to 35 million pounds seems to be the asking fee at the moment. I think it is a choice that needs to be made. Of course, looking at other positions that need to be made, it has to be another centre-back next, because although I'm not even a Tottenham Hotspurs fan, nothing drives me more crazy after all these years fighting for a top four spot to see either the likes of Davidson Sanchez or Eric Dyer at the back. Get back a second more of it. At the end of the day, Eric Dyer just is not a world-class centre-back and he's not going to get you to that top four spot. That's why I think they need a young, strong leader of a centre-back with the likes of Mark Gaihi, obviously former Chelsea centre-back, currently playing for Crystal Palace at the moment, and the 22-year-old has been linked to Tottenham Hotspurs a lot over the last few years. Of course, the only problem is the fact that he still has three years left on his contract and could go for a move up to 50 million pounds to Tottenham Hotspurs. But once again, if you do need a world-class centre-back with those leadership skills, I think you might as well go for it. He's been brilliant for Crystal Palace, and obviously a leader has been missing from the back since they got rid of both the likes of Alderweireld and Vertonghen. Once again, looking at Gahi, also a young English sense back, obviously there won't be that language barrier there, and he is Premier League proven. Now, of course, two positions, or a position that I desperately think needs to be improved at Tottenham Hotspurs, is that midfield position, which is why I've gone for two midfielders, because, I mean, looking at that game, I mean, yes, I know Tottenham Hotspurs are struggling with injuries such as Benteke and one or two other midfielders at the moment, but the fact that you are in a top four fight in a gigantic game versus Newcastle, and you have the likes of Saar and Skip in your midfield, what? What is this? For what? Why? It is just not good enough. And of course, looking at an attacking midfielder, it is something that's been missing from the Spurs team for quite a while now. I would say they've really struggled in that position since the likes of Deli Ali started to have his fall off, which is why I think they have to go for the almost 27-year-old Alex Iwobi. Of course, as we know, he's been brilliant for Everton this season. In terms of his numbers, he's been the top assist maker for Everton in the Premier League, the third most shots for the team, third most passes, and even the third most tackles. Moving from a winger position to that attacking midfielder, position has been life-changing for Alex Awoe. He's the best football player in the world. I don't know why people, why are you laughing for? What, Chris, why are you laughing for? Why? At the end of the day, I do think he is a player who if you slot him behind Harry Kane, if you slot him behind Hugh Masson or anyone in that attack, I think he would really take a lot off of this team. I mean, at the moment, in terms of assists, a lot of the contribution has come from Hoiberg in the midfield, which from your holding midfielder, obviously having numbers like that is really, really good, but you do need it to be another player's priority. Therefore, once again, if you can get Alex Iwobi in this team, it kind of takes the creative pressure off of other players and it helps the transition better from defence to attack. 
Now, of course, as I said, I have mentioned another midfielder as well. And hold on, ladies and gentlemen, because I do understand this one will sound like an interesting one. As I've gone for Philip Billing, or Phil Billing, obviously, as we know, currently playing for Bournemouth, 26 years old. And this is an absolute beast of a midfielder. I mean, he's by far been Bournemouth's best player this season. Looking at him number-wise, of course, he's their top goal scorer with seven goals in the league this season. He's their number one tackler, the third most interceptions. In terms of attack and defense, this man is absolutely brilliant. And if you add him to the squad, even if he just adds depth to Tottenham Hotspurs, I think he does deserve to be in a top Premier League club. Yeah, what, what, what can I do for you? Show me the money. <laughs> He's been at Bournemouth for about four years now, which no offense to the Cherries, but I do think he deserves slightly more than that. Once again, you miss those physical players at Tottenham Hotspurs in that midfield, such as Dembele, such as Sissoko, and all those other previous midfielders they've had. I do think Billing at 6 foot 4 would really change dimensions of the game, and he'll even get a goal here or there. Once again, I know it sounds like a really, really interesting one, but of course, let me know down below whether you agree or disagree. But of course, it takes us to our fifth and final player, which I mean, looking at such a devastating performance from Tottenham Hotspurs, it really is almost difficult to only list it to six different players. Further trouble. But I've gone for the likes of a very famous name in the likes of Alex Grimaldo. Of course, if you've been watching football for a while, if you know Barcelona, if you know Benfica, you know the likes of the world-class Spanish left back Grimaldo. Obviously still playing for Benfica after seven years at the club, 390 games, which within those 390 games for Benfica, getting 30 goals and 76 assists, which obviously Obviously, if you guys are trying to do the math there, which you probably are, that's 3.7 or 3.7 games to every goal contribution. <laughs> which for a modern day fullback, really, really good numbers. Obviously getting three titles under Benfica as well, 40 appearances in the Champions League. He has really had a successful time in Portugal. And that is a left back that I really do think Tottenham Hotspurs need. I mean, if you look at their current left backs at the moment, I mean, Perisic, don't get me wrong, he's a world-class player, but I view him as more of, obviously, as a left midfielder, more of an attacking player than a defensive left back. They've also got the likes of Davies, which oh, I wouldn't argue that he should play Premier League football at all even. Even the likes of Cesc who does struggle with injuries, but more of an attacking player. Obviously a huge problem versus Newcastle United is that Spurs didn't play their normal kind of three at the center, three centre back system. They played more of a back four system, which they never seem to use. But if they do want to go down the route of having more defensive fullbacks there, I do think Romaldo is the number one option. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's video. With five players I think Tottenham Hotspurs need to sign if they want to really compete at a top four level. And of course, replacing some really bad players with some really bad mentality. I mean, Jose Mourinho said it, Antonio Conte said it, multiple managers have said it. It seems to be a mentality problem at Tottenham Hotspurs, and I believe you need players with leadership abilities, and I think all five of these players could have that. Guys, I hope that you did enjoy this video. Of course, if you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers, bye.